The Range Rover Sport is a modern icon of luxury motoring. Much like its larger brother, driving a Range Rover is a bit different to driving a BMW, Audi, or even Mercedes-Benz SUV. It's not necessarily better or worse, but a Range Rover is a Range Rover, and in many ways, like Porsche, the Indian-owned British brand has managed to maintain its allure and prestige by not producing many cheaper vehicles sporting the same badge, something that can't be said about its German rivals. This conscious decision to keep Range Rover premium has paid dividends with the allure and prestige of Land Rover's premium brand remaining at an all-time high. After all, a Range Rover on the road is a status symbol that's the envy of many. The question is whether a Sport is a real Range Rover. The full-sized model we reviewed recently remains the pinnacle of luxury SUV motoring, rivaling the Bentley Bentayga or Rolls-Royce Cullinan, while the Sport is for those who perhaps don't need such a large SUV with seven seats and want something with a bit more dynamic prowess and capability. The new generation Range Rover Sport is built on the same platform as the Big Daddy and shares plenty of parts, technology, engines, and design characteristics. In other words, the Range Rover Sport is genuinely a slightly smaller version of the full-sized car at a massive discount. The Range Rover Sport actually looks like a great deal, with prices starting at $139,160, when compared to the full-sized model but is still a fair bit more expensive than it has ever been. It's also expensive compared to rivals such as the BMW X5, from $109,900, Audi Q7, from $107,523, and Mercedes-Benz GLE, from $114,204. There is a lot to know about the new Range Rover Sport from the fact that it offers tried-and-tested diesel and petrol engines, that it's available with a BMW Source twin-turbo 4.4-liter V8, and the fact there's a new plug-in hybrid that actually makes sense and works exceptionally well. There's also a pure electric model, coming in 2024. Australian buyers will have a much easier time getting access to the diesel models of the new Range Rover Sport for the initial launch period of the car given that our market does not have the super strict emission requirements that Range Rover faces in Europe and USA, meaning that models heading down under will be able to utilize slightly older emission systems that are not in short supply. With that in mind, the most popular Range Rover Sport model is projected to be the D300 given its price point and availability, with an extra $50,000 needed to get into a plug-in hybrid. How much does the Range Rover Sport cost? There are 12 variants of the Range Rover Sport available to order in Australia from launch. The diesels, D-badging, will be the quickest to arrive, before the petrol, P-badging, and hybrid models, E-badging, become more accessible in 2023. The Range Rover Sports price has increased by $25,000 to $30,000 compared to the previous model, and that will no doubt make its presence on the road more exclusive. Learn more. Given the current climate of low supply and high demand, it's highly unlikely any discounts are on offer for those looking to be among the first to order a new Sport. What is the Range Rover Sport like on the inside? The Range Rover Sport offers the best interior package of any SUV in its class. It's a big statement, but it's simply true. We don't mean in terms of technology alone, because it's probably not up to the offerings from the German trio when it comes to connected tech but in terms of fit and finish, material use and cabin ambience, it's top-notch. There are also some worthwhile mentions in regards to ergonomics. The steering wheel and pedal positions, and the ability to quickly make all the adjustments required within easy reach, makes driving the Range Rover Sport stress-free. The 13.7-inch digital driver instrument cluster display comes standard across the range and has a really nice, high-resolution display as well as a distinctive shape that gives the cabin a great sense of modernity without taking away the elegance of its design. We also love the 13.1-inch infotainment touchscreen borrowed from the full-size Range Rover. It's slightly curved and looks brilliant. The technology powering it, though, is a bit buggy. 
It seems to stutter a fair bit when driving through the CBD trying to project the 3D display of buildings around, which is annoying because it's 2022, and a 10-year-old iPhone could do this, and even navigating out in the country it seems to occasionally stutter with screen flickers and momentary freezes. We are mindful the cars we drove are very early examples and most of these issues are software, not hardware-based.